Hello, everyone, and welcome to Top of Mind. I'm Mary Masalio, and today I want to introduce a three-part Top of Mind series that we are kicking off. This is based on findings from the IT Symposium keynote that we did late last year, and we want to give you a little bit of an update. So we're calling it AI Outcomes That Matter, because there's really three that matter, and this is a three-part series based on each one of those outcomes. The first one are AI business outcomes, the second one is AI technology outcomes, and the third one is AI behavioral outcomes. Anybody who's serious about AI has to care about all three of these outcomes. So let's kick off this video with AI business outcomes. To give you a little bit of context, a lot of CIOs and IT practitioners feel like in the Gartner hype cycle, they actually feel like they're at the peak and in the trough at the same time. And that's because there's actually two AI races taking place at the same time. The first race is in the industry. If you're a CIO or an end user organization in IT, this is not your race. This is the race of the hyperscalers racing to get crazy valuable, crazy innovative AI outcomes, and they're going all out. This isn't your race. You're not in it. You have to watch it. You're a spectator. You have to know what's going on, but you're not running in this race, but you are running in some kind of race. And your race is the race to deliver AI outcomes safely and at scale. And it turns out this is really hard. The pressure's on. CEOs believe that AI is the technology that will most impact their industry. The number of CEOs who say this goes up every year. Last time we asked in late last year in 2024, the number of CEOs who said AI would most impact their industry of all the technologies that, was, that were out there was 74%. So it sort of feels like you're at the peak because there's this relentless innovation. Every week, something game-changing seems to happen. But then it feels like you're also in the trough because it's really hard to get value. There is no Harry Potter magic wand just saying, this is as easy as using chat GPT. It's actually a lot harder than that. So today I wanna to talk a little bit about where AI business outcomes are and give you a little bit of an update. So the first thing I want you to know is that there are three types of business case for AI, not just one. So a lot of times, uh, we get questions like, what's the ROI? What's the ROI of AI? Where's the ROI, et cetera? And ROI is one of the business cases, but it's only one. There's actually three. There's ROE, ROI, and ROF. So ROE stands for return on employee, or some of us call it return on enterprise. The first thing to know about return on employee is this is where you're applying AI to get outcomes that are about personal productivity, like summarizing this email, this, this video, or generating an email for you, or translating it into Spanish, for example. These are all examples of personal AI productivity using technologies like Microsoft Copilot or Google Gemini or Apple Intelligence or whatever you're using. And a lot of times we get asked, what's the ROI of this? And the cold hard truth is there isn't one. This isn't an ROI play. It's an ROE play. It definitely delivers a return, but it's not a return on investment that you can measure in financial terms. It's a return on employee that you measure in employee engagement, employee well-being. So asking, hey, what's the return on my personal AI productivity tool of choice? What's the ROI of that? Is a little bit like asking, what's the ROI of email? It's a little bit like going into a car dealership and saying, hey, can you just, I just want to shave off some money. Can you just sell me the car with three tires instead of four tires? People would look at you and go, that's an absurd question. Just like if you said, what's the ROI of email? Do we really need it? You would say, you just need it. So ROE is a cost center in that you're not going to get a financial return. And that's hard for people to believe because, or hard for people to accept, because you have this big number of the cost and you're not going to get this commensurate number on the other side. You do get return. It's just not in financial terms. That's ROE, really valuable, really valuable from a talent distraction and retention perspective, but not an ROI play. Then you have the ROI play. This is classic ROI. This is where you apply AI in some kind of process or workflow that you already deeply understand. And you're gonna apply it here to extend, enhance, improve, ameliorate, sustain what you already do. So you're taking AI and making something you already do better. And 
I, if, if you if you pitch me an idea like this, I'm going to ask you for an ROI business case. I'm going to ask you for some detail. I'm going to say, if you think cycle times are going to go down by 15% or you think revenues are going to go up by 10%, I want to see the numbers. And I and I have a relatively high degree of, of, of confidence that you know what you're doing because you already have people who know how to do this. They have the skills and competencies. You have deep domain knowledge in this area, this process, this workflow. And so you're saying, I'm going to apply AI to get some kind of benefit that I kind of understand. So I'm going to hold you to it. It's a classic ROI play. Here, you're looking at the same business metrics as you'd be looking at for anything else. Decrease in cycle time, decrease in risk, increase in profit, increase in, in revenue, right? There's no special AI metrics here. You're going to be held to the same ROI metrics as you would for anything else. So that's the ROI business case. Then you have this third one called ROF, return on the future. This is also not an ROI play. Because this is where you're going to place a bunch of strategic bets. Not everyone's going to do this. You're going to say, look, I'm going to act like a venture venture investor. So I'm going to place nine bets in full knowledge that eight of them aren't going to work. They're going to fail spectacularly. But the ninth is going to pay for the other eight. This kind of investing is only for people who have really big AI ambitions, really want to be first in their industry or rewrite the rules. It's not for everybody. It's not for the faint of heart. It's definitely not an ROI play. Because you don't know enough to make a bulletproof business case of whether this is going to work. And if you do do a bulletproof business case, you're probably kind of making up the numbers. Not because you're not working hard enough to analyze, but because you can't know unless you do it. You don't know if customers are going to find this creepy. You don't know if people what the market uptake is going to be because it's so new. But you want to invest anyway because you want to be first. You want to be disruptive. You have big ambitions. So the first message I want to say about AI business outcomes is consider managing these three types of value, ROE, ROI, and ROF, like a portfolio. So rather than asking, what's the ROI on that? Ask, how much money do I want to invest in ROE versus ROI versus ROF, right? So, you know, making a crude analogy, investing in ROF is like investing in crypto, right? I mean, it's it's a, it's a considered to be a more volatile, risky asset class, but maybe big upsides. Investing in ROE is like having money in your savings account. No one that I know goes, you wouldn't believe the return I just got in my savings account, but you need to have money there. And investing in ROI in, in is like investing in an ETF or an indexed fund, right? It's supposed to be balanced. You're supposed to be balancing your risk, et cetera. So I think asking how do we want to invest across as a portfolio investment across these different business cases is a much more useful way to think about AI business outcomes. Last thing to say about AI business outcomes, cost. It would be irresponsible to talk about business outcomes if we didn't talk about the value side, but also the cost side. Gen AI costs are not like traditional IT costs. They don't scale the same way. They don't behave the same way. The critical thing to understand here is that uh, Gen AI costs are unpredictable and volatile. So traditional IT costs are about maintenance and service fees and things that a lot of people complain are too high, but they're kind of predictable, a little bit like paying your taxes. You know, you don't go this year, my income tax is 24% and suddenly I had a 67% income tax. Usually it's, it's predictable. People complain it's too high, but it's predictable. But Gen AI costs are unpredictable. And people are off by their in their cost estimates by sometimes 500 to 1,000%. So just know this is a lot more like the first time you got your cloud bill, where you might have asked, hey, why does this thing cost so much? And second, what are they even charging me for? So really make sure you are exploring and understanding cost models before making a big leap. So that's AI business outcomes. If you want to geek out a little bit more on this, check out the links in the notes. And that's the end of part one. Make sure you come back for part two, where we're going to talk about AI technology outcomes. Thanks everyone for watching and see you next time.